All right, so good morning, everyone. Uh, I wanna go and uh, thank everyone for joining me today to New York City's Open Data Week. Uh, my name is John Melchiori uh, with the Department of Sanitation. I'm a superintendent with the department's operations assistance unit. This morning, I'll be giving you a presentation on DSMY's tonnage data set that's hosted on Open Data. Here at OAU, we use this tonnage data to project trends in New York City waste generation. This is gonna help the department create and manage different initiatives within the city. At the end of the presentation, uh, we'll hold a QA. and uh, a As we go along, if you have questions and you wanna write them uh, inside the chat, so this way you don't forget them, you can do that. If not, you'll have the opportunity to go and then actually verbally uh, ask your questions. So with that, uh, let's get started. So um, during the presentation, you're gonna learn about um, how to access the data, uh, what's actually included in the data set, uh, all the description of the materials uh, from refuse to recycling, uh, to the organic waste program that we have. Um, you're also gonna go and learn how to export and visualize the data set. Uh, finally, we'll have a brief overview how the materials collected and how the data is recorded. So the tonnage data set is gonna be available on New York City Open Data homepage. Uh, you're just gonna type in monthly tonnage and into the search bar, and then it's gonna pop you. The DSNY monthly tonnage data set is DSNY's most popular data set on New York City Open Data portal with over 23,000 views. This data set provides monthly tonnage collection, uh, monthly tonnage collection uh, for the department uh, it pretty much collects from all of the New York City residents and institutions. For more information on DSMY services, you can please visit the service section on the DSMY website. If you want more information about DSMY's curbside composting, please go to the website and click on the section labeled Curbside Composting Overview. This data set was first published in 2014, but goes back 10 years and is automatically updated every month. It currently contains 22,000 rows. 11 columns. In the attachment section, you can access the data dictionary. The data dictionary explains each column in the data set and provides links for different, different information. Please don't try to read the slide. Uh, the print's way too small. We'll go over briefly what each column represents throughout the presentation. The first three columns of the monthly tonnage data set highlighted in yellow contain the year and month, the borough name, and the New York City Community District, which also corresponds to the Sanitation District. New York City is divided into 59 geographic community districts, each one having a respective community board. There is a maximum of 250,000 people per community district. The community district breakdown is as follows. You have 12 districts in the Bronx, 18 in Brooklyn, 12 in Manhattan, 14 in Queens, and three in Staten Island. The fourth column in the data set is highlight, highlighted in gray here, shows the tons of trash or refuse collected from New York City residents and institutions serviced by the New York City Department of Sanitation. Within the SMY, the material code is labeled as 01. Refuse collection is one of the biggest services provided by the Department of Sanitation. To learn more about sanitation services, please go to the service tab on the sanitation website on nyc.gov. The services section of the website describes the various collection programs provided by the Department of Sanitation, which includes the collection of trash, recycling, and food scraps and yard waste. We also have programs to handle harmful products, electronics, and also reusable goods. Other sanitation services include street cleaning and snow removal. Going back to the monthly tonnage data set, the fifth column highlighted in green shows the tons of source separated recyclable material, uh, recyclable paper for the most part, on New York City residents and institutions that are serviced by New York City Department of Sanitation personnel. Source separated means that materials are separated by residents before they are set out for collection. Within DSMY, the code for paper is 31. In New York City, the paper that is collected for recycling includes mixed paper, such as newspapers, magazines, catalogs, phone books, white and colored paper, mail, envelopes, receipts, paper bags, wrapping paper, and soft cover book. Also in this category is cardboard, such as egg cartons and trays, smooth cardboard, such as food and shoe boxes, tubes, file folders, pizza boxes, paper cups, and other corrugated cardboard. The next column, highlighted in blue, shows the tons of source-separated recyclable materials of pretty much metal, glass, plastic, and beverage cartons collected from New York City residents and institutions. 
We call this category M MGP for short. Again, source separated means that the material is separated by residents before that is set out the curbside, set curbside for collection. The code for MGP is 33. In New York City, MGP recycling includes all kinds of metal, metal cans, caps and links, aluminum foil, aluminum wrap, trays, household material, uh, household metal items, including wire hangers, pots, tools, uh, bulky metal items, including furniture and metal cabinets, glass, including bottles and jars, rigid plastic, such as plastic bottles, jugs and jars, plastic caps and lids, plastic containers and housewares. Cartons include food, food and drink beverage cartons. The seventh column in the monthly tonnage data set highlighted in brown shows the tons of source separated residential organics. Only certain areas within New York City receive this curbside composting, curbside composting service. Residential organics include food scraps, food soil paper, and yard waste. The code for residential organics is 45. Sanitation programs to handle food scraps and yard waste from residents also include not only the curbside composting, but also drop-off composting, Christmas tree collection, and additionally leaf collection. The eighth column in the monthly tonnage data set highlighted in orange shows the tons of source-separated organics collected from New York City schools. Only certain schools within areas in New York City receive the service. Like residents, school and organics include food scraps, food soil paper, and yard waste. The code for school organics is 46. The ninth column, highlighted in maroon, shows the tons of source-separated leaves collected in the months of November and December from New York City residents within certain neighborhoods. The code for leaf collection is 52. The neighborhoods within the five boroughs that receive seasonal leaf collection service from the Department of Sanitation include those that have the most leaves to collect. This includes all of Queens, all of Staten Island, nearly all of Brooklyn, and just about half of the Bronx. The last two columns in the monthly tonnage data set show the tons of Christmas tree collection from New York City residents in January. This is highlighted in green. And then also the borough ID, which is used to identify New York City boroughs this is highlighted in purple. Christmas tree collection code is 54. The borough ID codes, which are used citywide, is one for Manhattan, two for the Bronx, three for Brooklyn, four for Queens, and five for Staten Island. So now that you have an, an understanding and an overview of the basics of the, the tonnage data set, now we'll go over to working with the data. Here you have several options. If you want to export the data set, you just select export, this option is circled in red above, and you choose the option you want. After you export the data, you can do different sorts. For example, if you look at the top image, if you sort by paper tons collected from largest to smallest, you see that Manhattan District 8, highlighted in yellow, has generated the most paper in December and October of 2004, followed by November of 2007 and December of 2005. The this paper tonnages range from 2,130 tons to 1,949 tons for the full month analysis. If you look at MGP tonnages, highlighted in blue, you see that Queens District 12 has generated the most MGP recyclables in June and July of 2020, ranging from 1,250 to 1,246 for this two month sample. In addition to exporting the data, you can create visualizations by using the tools on the open data platform. You do this by selecting the visualization dropdown and selecting create visualization. If you want to save any visualizations that you create, you will need to create a free account. By exploring the different options within the visualizations tool, you can create many different visualizations utilizing the filter features. If you create a visualization that you like, you can save it by selecting save draft at the bottom right. After you save your visualization, you can publish it by selecting the publish button at the top right. When publishing your visualization, you can make it public or share between collaborators that you designate. All right, so before closing, I want to give you guys a brief overview regarding how DSNY collects and weighs the material that it picks up. This is going to be the source that generates all of this tonnage data. So the way DSNY collects refuse set out the curve by residents we then go, we collect it, and then it dumps at a transfer station associated with that respective district. So all the different districts have different transfer stations that they will be going to. Transfer stations are either run by sanitation or a private vendor. 
When arriving at the transfer station, sanitation trucks scale in, they then dump their load, then scale out as they exit. This scaling in and out process gives DSNY an accurate tonnage that was collected and it is recorded. DSNY collects paper and MGP recyclables set out at the curb by residents, sometimes in dual bin trucks, as shown in the photo at the top left. DSNY then takes the material to a specific recycling vendor with the associated district where the materials were collected. Similar to refuse trucks, recycling trucks scale in, dump their load, and then scale out so that accurate tonnage can be recorded for the material dump. Sometimes these dual trucks may need to go to two separate vendors to unload the material based on the commodities that are collected. These dual trucks are also the primary truck that is used to collect material from schools. Residential and school organics are also dumped at specific transfer stations associated with that district. The same process of scaling in and out will occur to record the most accurate tonnage. Sanitation collects leaves in the fall on specific dates in designated districts and takes the material to a compost facility run by private vendors. Christmas trees are collected in early January citywide and are taken to parks facilities where they are chipped and they are turned into mold. So uh, in closing, I want to thank you all for joining us today uh, to learn a little about the tonnage data set and in the department a little bit about collection on how we generate the, the data set. Um, I'll be now while I'll go through the chat or, you know, we could go through and uh, everybody raise their hand and we could, uh, you know, answer some questions regarding the tonnage data. So with that, okay, so uh, Oliver Wright, I see you have your hand up. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, thanks very much for your, your presentation this morning. It's great to be here. Um, I just had a question regarding um, the school organics data, because um, I see that you you um, present that separately from residential curbside organics. So does that imply that it's it's collected on a separate round in a separate vehicle, or do you have a way of, of um, separately weighing the school organics within the same round in the same vehicle? Oh, that's, that's a great question. So the way we at the Department of Sanitation is everything is broken up by districts, right? So each district has trucks that will go out and collect uh, on their route. So school organic is collected, uh, could be that route, that truck can actually traverse over multiple districts to collect all the school that, uh, all the school organic weight. So that school truck, that actual truck that's collecting the school is strictly dedicated to collect the organics and other recyclable materials for the schools that it represents. Got it. Okay. So um, it, it's only going around schools um, and then, but then you mentioned that it traverses multiple districts. So how is it possible to kind of get the, the data for each district school organics in that way? Correct. So it's not weighed at, um, at a school level. It's weighed as a, a school route level, just like the individual collection trucks that go out. We're not essentially weighing every stop. We're weighing it by the district location. So we'll know, uh, be able to, so we could just have a breakdown about how many people are in, how many students are in the school and have a breakdown of what each school generates just by uh, creating different, um, you know, correlating different measures. Sure, got it. Thank you very much. You got it, Oliver. Uh, Daniel, do you have your hand up? Hey, super, good morning. Uh, question on the data. I was curious to know if, uh, what quantity of the tonnage values is generated by private business, businesses or small businesses or nonprofits? Um, is there a way the department quantifies that, if any? So none of this data is, has to do with uh, any commercial businesses. This is all residential, uh, besides the school data that's, uh, the school tonnages that's weighed separately. Everything else is residential. Uh, uh, residential material. Uh, they will be a few nonprofits uh, um, that have registered for the department that are collected, but for the most part, it is straight residential. All right, uh, Mark, I see you have your hand up. Hi, John. This is, um, I mean, it's Mark Schifflet. I'm with the Manhattan Solid Waste Advisory Board. Uh, I'm curious at the transfer stations, do you do with the uh, commingled black bag trash, do you do daily audits? So, not black bags? So not daily audits. Um, the, there are certain times that the department will go and hire and do waste characterizations to find out what exactly is in the in the bag. It's been a while since they uh, since they had their last waste characterization. I think they're in the process of actually booking another one. But no, daily audits are in uh, in the current. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> 
Thank you. I really enjoyed your presentation and I like the pace that you delivered it. And it gave me time to think about some things about how you might use this tonnage data in your strategic planning process. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So pretty much um, where, you know, there's a, a tonnage cap, how much we can actually fit into a truck. So in certain areas that are naturally that are become more dense and more populated, uh, it's important for us to get ahead of it because at that point we could see that if we need to add more trucks to the area. And the same thing is, areas become less populated, we could better use our resources instead of rolling trucks that have minimal material on. Yes, thank you. You got to read this. Okay, I see a question in the chat uh, that said, did you notice anything interesting in the numbers during lockdown? Um, yeah, I mean, there was, um, I don't, I can't speak to it full on, but we did see tonnage shift in recycling. Uh, we did see some higher MGP numbers. We did see a decrease in tonnage within Manhattan. Uh, so yeah, and that's something that the department that, you know, our unit will go and we'll look at and develop trends and, and send, and, you know, we'll try to do our best, to to re to reallocate resources. Uh, what would you want to capture? This is another question is what would you want to capture that you don't capture now? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, the more information that we get as a department, uh, the better that we're able to, you know, the better we're able to make, you know, better initiatives to service the department, uh, to service the residents of New York City. Um, you know, like someone said earlier, um, what exactly is in the black bags? That's actually great because if we are able to, to do more waste character characterizations to see what's getting thrown out, maybe through better, you know, uh, better messaging, we get our recycling numbers up because, you know, we all want to have see zero waste in the landfill. So if we're able to get better messaging and we know exactly what's going in the black bags, we see that there's a lot of recycling in there. You know, we can better target those areas for messaging and hopefully get those the recycling numbers up for better diversion. Uh, is this data only available at the borough level? Uh, yes, right now it currently is only available at the borough level. Are mostly used buildings represented here? Some buildings have commercial uh, on the bottom floor and residentials above. Is the, trash collect, is the trash collected separate in different trucks, different days? Uh, great question. Um, one of the tricky things is as we're picking up, uh, as we're actually picking up the material, is it's the job of the sanitation workers to recognize what's residential material and commercial material. Uh, like I previously stated, commercial material, we do not service uh, on these trucks. Uh, we don't service commercial material, period. So at that point, we have to go and recognize what is residential. Uh, you know, residential collection uh, doesn't change. So if you're picked up twice a week on Tuesday and Friday, that's when we're gonna be there. And that's when we'll see the residential material at the curb. So it's usually easy for us to, to tell the difference between the two. Do you monitor textiles? Uh, there has been certain programs of uh, uh, initiatives throughout the, the years where there was some textile programs out there, but not on an everyday basis. And th there was a question about um, prior to the multi-use buildings from Allison. Oh, what trends do you see with residential organic collection? Um, so right now, you know, we're in an opt-in program and, you know, we're very positive with it. Uh, you know, the more people that are opt-in in certain areas, uh, you know, we see the tonnage going up. Uh, you know, that's pretty much it. The more people that opt-in, you know, it's a great program. We encourage everybody to do it. And, you know, hopefully, you know, the more or people that opt in and the better that they do source separate the material, separating the organics from the, the trash, our organic tonnage will be going up and our refuse tonnage will be going down. So that's a good thing for the city. Yeah, with um, talk about uh, ever increasing community districts or just creating new community districts in any borough. How quick is the department or how quick would you like the department to be to enjoy join those conversations, right? You have an increase, or well, if the city wants to increase population by creating new community districts, you first have to really talk about how to manage that waste first before any feasible plan can come out. That's a question. Okay, so um, just so I make sure I get the question right, is how do we handle the increase in population? That's pretty much the... Yeah, how early in the talks are you with any just uh, leaders in New York City? Uh, well, I'm going to give a, a general statement. Um, we do what we have to do to get the garbage off the street. 
whatever comes our way, whether it's snow, COVID, or you know, increase of population, uh, the department pivots and you know, we run a very good operation. And you know, we have a lot of people that make that assist in making decisions and they go and you know make sure it gets done. And if it's a long-term thing, you know, they'll figure out and make a plan, put it into a uh, put it in place. But it's not getting in the garbage is never an option. Just like, you know, when it snows, we got to make sure that we clear the street. So I see why is the organic program only in certain districts and how are these districts selected? Uh, I really am um, not 100% sure to speak on that. Uh, that's really not part of, uh, it's probably a little bit above my pay grade on that. I'm sorry, I can't answer that one. Uh, will it be more residential pickups for organics in areas that are not currently serviced? I would like to take part in the program, but my area is not part of the current routes. Uh, yeah, same thing, uh, same answer to the question. Uh, hopefully, you know, eventually we would love to get to everywhere, but you know, that's, uh, once again, I'm not able to really give you an answer on that. Then did, did I miss any questions in the chat? Oh, okay. uh, have you ever compared your data with other cities? How does New York City do in terms of waste? Uh, no, I mean, I can't speak if anybody else in the department has done anything like that. What I can tell you is, is that New York City does have the most complex and, uh, you know, very strategic data-driven probably waste department there is. You know, we service 8 million residents and we do it actually very well. Uh, you know, we have a huge recycling program. Uh, it's probably the largest in the world. So um, I couldn't give you an exact uh, comparison. Uh, has there been any talk about curbside dumpsters instead of bags on the curb? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you know, that's not, uh, that's not relatively in my, uh, in my wheelhouse. Is the data for commercial waste? Uh, I'm interested in a project examining the effects on the pandemic on waste and distribution. Um, no, there isn't. So commercial waste isn't handled with the department. Uh, private vendors collect the commercial waste and dump at their locations. So at that point, I'm not able to, uh, you know, to talk about as far as commercial waste is concerned. I'm not sure where you would get that data from. Do you track bulk items like furniture or do you have any plans to track potentially reusable items? Uh, listen, bulk furniture, I really just gets selected, uh, gets picked up with the regular household garbage, uh, household trash collection. So, you know, we don't really keep track of it. It's, that's pretty much just, uh, you know, we consider it as just regular trash and goes into the truck. Does anybody else have any other uh, questions? Um, John, there's a question above Allison's question about the trash bulk. There's one about clothing recycling. Okay. Um, yeah. So as far as... Uh, I see now. Uh, recycling clothing. I do know they run certain initiatives. Uh, we don't have, I don't believe, a daily uh, recycling program, but they have run in the past. Uh, they call them white goods, and they would go and uh, they would go and so collect them. No, the question was about clothing recycling. Yeah, the clothing recycling. Yes. Yeah, so oh, you okay? Yeah. All right. So if that's all the questions, Zachary, I think. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you so much for, for coming to talk about this data. And thanks everyone for, for coming with your, your questions for the Department of Sanitation. And um, thank you to, um, especially to the Department of Sanitation. And, and John, thank you for presenting.